Kulab, a site that I have previously covered and also personally exposed the true scale of. Seemingly, or more than likely deliberately overlooked by academia, Kulab not only possesses an enormous ancient wall, which surrounds the entrance to the site, which according to academia, was seemingly placed upon the plateau of a naturally formed hill. However, after personally investigating this site myself, I found that not only had the wall constructed took unimaginable effort to build, but that the site beyond this impenetrable fortress had in fact been backfilled with earth, artificially creating the plateau that geologists, academics, and archaeologists alike long ignored and merely assumed was selected due to natural features, were in fact artificially created. However, it is clear for all to see that not only was the plateau painstakingly created to backfill to this fortress's wall, but the ingenious entrances were also the work of a people of tremendous intellect. Many of the passageways into the site allow many to enter the passages. However, as the invaders made their way along these elevations to penetrate the fortress itself, not only were they wide open to arrow fire from above from both sides, but also by design, the passageways slowly narrowed to a point where only one person at a time could actually enter the site. However, the purpose of this video is not the astonishing architectural features of the site itself, but possibly an exposure of the true creators of the site. A group of people with characteristics which may come as a shock to some and been long predicted by others. Found deep within a cave system within the site, a burial chamber at the depth of 800 meters, a burial chamber created at this location for the sole purpose of preserving these individuals' remains for as long as possible, and also to avoid the ravages tomb raiders that have been experienced over the eons by many of the other burial sites by many different cultures. There are many wooden idols that have seemingly been treated with lost technologies and have survived the climate astonishingly well. Yet, this set of mummies could expose once and for all who were responsible for this astonishing site and indeed its miraculous characteristics. Thankfully, although much of the ancient tombs had been ravaged by robbers over the years, this absence of mummies didn't deter archaeologist Warren Church who's worked for 19 years to save Los Pachudos and learn its secrets. Seemingly successfully unraveling its innermost protected secrets, and possibly coming face to face with its original builders, they were known as the Chachapoya, or the Cloud People by the Incas, who by this stage had re-inhabited the ancient pre-Incan ruins which dot Peru, and due to the ingenious nature of the fortress, the tremendous efforts that went into building it, and the seemingly impenetrable nature of its design, the Cloud People seemingly survived all the way up until the Spanish invasion, only succumbing to the introduction of smallpox, which the Spanish seemingly brought with them. An intriguing characteristic of these enigmatic people is the fact that they left no written language, yet adorned their site with countless stone carvings of orchids, butterflies, and jaguars. According to Warren Church, for more than 500 years, the Chachapoya cut farm terraces and villages into these steep slopes. This burial chamber, found deep within the site, shows that not only did they display great respect for their dead, but that they were of European origin, white-skinned and blonde-haired, with Church apparently stating that the mummies are of the most beautiful past people he has ever witnessed. Were these mummies the remains of the original builders of this astonishing site? Or were they like the Incas, merely re-inhabitations, although how they got there to these Peruvian hills and controllers of Kulap itself remains a mystery. Yet white mummies of a seemingly European ancestry have been found throughout the globe. Does this suggest that the ruling force we so often postulate once existed? that many known as the Atlanteans shared their knowledge across the globe before catastrophe? Regardless of their ethnicity, we find such research by church highly admirable and such discoveries highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, 
If you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India. A temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people? A remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study. Within the Baraba and Nagarjuni hills of the Jihanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides they could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which literally boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements perfectly preserved in its original state, demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish, evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave and additionally Kailash Temple are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash temple, also another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone? Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the third century BC, who ruled over almost the entire country of India, caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this. An astonishing collection of ancient evidential items and rediscovered historical factors have allowed the argument for an once lost history to have existed, all but now a foregone conclusion. A civilization at which some point in our distant past was lost, yet a once highly advanced worldwide culture. The proof that these ruins were all built by the same people or by those who were in contact with each other worldwide is now, we feel, overwhelming, yet their technological capabilities were just as equally astonishing. Cut from nearly every type of strata, ruins with such precision, not only do they seemingly appear to have been cut with laser technologies, but the Barbara Caves is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown. When previously looked at by us, we were astonished by the finish of the cave's walls, both in surface and angle which, thankfully, due to the structure's sheltered nature, have survived for at least 2,300 years in incredible condition. 
Even more astounding, however, is that this precision has recently been confirmed using modern sonar-like technology, allowing for an incredibly detailed map of each cave to be created, each cave's image made from millions of points of reference, revealing for the first time in well over 2,000 years just how incredible the creators of these cave systems were a feat many now believe we could not achieve ourselves. Perfect 180 curvatures on the roofs, perfect 90-degree angles on the doorways, perfectly flat floors, and perfectly vertical walls. The creation of the caves was simply perfect. We feel it is undeniable that whoever created these caves had in their possession incredibly advanced stone-cutting technologies. Yet, how this was done and with what are questions which we find hugely intriguing. Mustang formerly the Kingdom of Lo, northern Nepal. A group of man-made structures can be found in this part of the Himalayan mountains, which defy modern understanding. Not only does this place defy understanding, but the ancient builders appear to have somehow defied gravity. At the end of the 18th century, the Kingdom of Lo was annexed by Nepal. Mustang was a restricted demilitarized area until 1992, which makes it one of the most preserved regions in the world. Reports from the area spoke of extremely ancient human dwellings, chiseled into a sheer cliff face, within a gorge which dwarfs the Grand Canyon. The caves are many thousands of years old, they are dug into a vertical mountain face, at least 150 feet in the air, with no way of accessing them from the ground, or above. How ancient people built these caves, or indeed why remains a mystery. Around 10,000 man-made caves dot the gorge, as if an entire colony of people lived perched on a mountainside. They appear to have been built to hide from something, rather than a fortification. Adventure photographer, Corey Richards, climber Pete Athons, archaeologist Mark Alden Defeer and a team of explorers, visited the caves to try to unearth their hidden relics. They found extremely valuable and semi-ancient Buddhist artifacts, along with the Buddhist relics, ancient, semi-mummified, human remains were discovered within a few of the caves. These bodies have been dated at more than 3,000 years old, predating Buddhism by some time. It would appear that how ancient they were precisely, remains a guarded secret. Climbing into the sky caves was no easy feat, the rock was unstable and posed a real danger to the team of explorers. In fact climbing into the caves was so dangerous, Mr. Richards lost his footing, fell and broke his back. On another assignment to Mustang, the following year, videographer Lincoln Else was hit by a falling rock, fracturing his skull. In some of the caves, skeletons dating from the 3rd to the 8th centuries, which had cut marks on the bones that may have been inflicted during the practice of sky burial, were discovered. This is where the body's flesh is left to be eaten by vultures. Sky burial is still practiced in many remote regions in the Himalayas to this day. However, some believe these cave systems even predate these remains, with some evidence to support such suspicions. The erosion found on the cave systems shows signs of many millennia of light rainfall. Some have had time to virtually erode away. Who do you think built the Mustang Sky Caves? Why do you think they built them, and how? These magical caves show such abnormality to modern understanding, nearly nothing of their existence can be explained. A two-headed dog with six legs.